G'day, welcome to Queensland Farmer. Well, as things dry off around the farm, we're getting uh, inventive and we're going to move the cattle into an area that we haven't had them before. This area is beside one of our big dams. You can probably see that in the background. We normally keep the cattle out of here because one of the aspects of regen farming is that you really don't want the cattle stepping into areas that are soft. The reason we don't have cattle in here normally is that there are no fences to exclude them from the watercourse. Now cattle don't mind where they step, they're uh, keen to just wander in and have a drink and when they do that, typically what that does is that it erodes the edges where they step and they can also pollute the water supply. That's the sort of thing that we want to avoid. So what we'll do today is we're going to set up some temporary electric fencing and uh, we'll make sure that the cattle can get in here, have a feed and not do any damage to the environment. So just out uh, preparing to put this uh, temporary electric fence in place here and I've come across a wire that's uh, given way whether kangaroos hit it or something's happened or it's let go so it's always helpful to be prepared so we'll do a quick repair while we're at it. When you're terminating the end of a barbed wire fence, you don't need to do knots like you do with uh, plain wires. The barbs tend to uh, bind up on each other each time you go around. So that's all I've done in this case. And if uh, you have a look over here where I made that slight join, same thing there, it'll, uh, it'll hold in place. And certainly that's as good as new. So to start off the electric fence, we're going to use Gallagher's wooden post insulators. These are pretty simple to put together. They've got a couple of slots here that for screws, which you need to bring. You put them up against where you want this thing to sit. And you screw it in. This here breaks off. The wire will go in here and you lock it off with that. So I've put a steel post in, and this is another Gallagher product. This is designed to insulate a steel post in the ground. They're fairly simple to fit. Just line this hole up here with these holes here. If you've got it all lined up, they slot in pretty easily. Just like that. The wire will come through here, get caught in here. That plastic peg there will lock it off into place.
We're just about through putting uh, all the posts through so we can run that electric fence. And uh, this part of the block is, is pretty barren. If you have a look around, there's not a lot of grass growing here. This certainly is uh, pretty poor quality soil. So we'll just need to make sure that we don't have the cattle here for a long time so they don't make the conditions any worse. There's certainly an opportunity for me to put some, some um, mulch down through here to try and stabilise this area. It does look poor. This will certainly be the first time that uh, we've had cattle in this area and we'll just make sure that we limit their exposure to it. The difference in quality of soil makes a huge difference in the quality of grass. The grass here is, is pretty ordinary. In uh, this section, for example, the, the grass is pretty good and you'll see that there's uh, plenty of green shoots happening and it's quite thick. Unlike here where, because it's so dry, the, the ground is actually cracking up. It's a shame to see, but uh, like I say, it's been, uh, it's been dry and we've had storms around us, but uh, apparently it's just not our time yet. This is now a dry creek bed and uh, normally when it is raining, there's plenty of water in here. You can see here by the erosion that cattle have been allowed to come along the fence. They tend to gravitate towards the sides of the fence or close to the fence and they've eroded this area out here and also over here. Now you can see it's distinctly different from the area where they don't tend to head towards. And this is precisely the reason that you try and keep the cattle out of wet areas. And the use of an electric fence like we're doing today is, uh, is a great way to make that happen. Well, that's all the poles out. Now to run the wire out. As you can see, the cattle are ready to come in here already. They'll be waiting at the gate before we know it. We'll just start rolling this one out. this uh, nylon electric fence has come to an end. So there are connectors that you can buy uh, to connect these together. But for today, I'm just going to do a bit of a tie just to tie them together and that will uh, get us out of trouble. Put a couple of these in here and it should be enough not to have too much loss on the connection. As I say, there is wire that goes um, along this nylon so, with a bit of luck, that'll be fine. Now we'll continue. So one of the trees that we put uh, an insulator on is uh, is interesting. I've uh, not seen this before. I've even asked out around to see if anyone else has seen this sort of thing. But it looks like it's been chewed into. You can see that there's remnants of, of bark. And it's just not clear what's actually happened. Initially, I thought it might have been a pig um, or a deer. Not that I've seen many deers around here. I'm told that deers won't do that, but uh, it's not clear what it is. So if you know what it is, please leave that comment uh, for me. I'd really like to know. Well, now it's time to put the energizer into place. I'm using a galvanized Waratah post instead of one of those black steel ones, because this is much more resistant 
to rusting and it's also more likely to get a good earth if it's not affected by rust. You can see the inner drives is facing where the sun will come from, which is up here, which means I'm more likely to get maximum sunlight throughout the day. All done. As you can see, those cattle were a little bit cautious about going into that paddock. They'd never been there before, so they took a bit of encouraging. However, they'll, uh, they'll wander in there in the coming days and certainly have a feed. You might notice that you know, the grass is this high here and over here it's quite a bit higher. There's plenty of feed in this, so this will sustain them for at least a week. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe.